thank you so much, David, for meeting with me today. Um, I was wondering if you could please just introduce yourself, uh, tell us a little bit about um, what your job is, what agency you're affiliated with, um, if you've been affiliated with uh, the CESU or LTR networks, and how long you've been working for an agency. Okay, great. So my name is David Walters. Um, I am a research ecologist and a supervisor at the U.S. Geological Survey. So I'm kind of split between science and management. Um, I have been working with the federal government since 2002. So what is that, 22 years? I started out with the U.S. EPA, um, Office of Research and Development in Cincinnati, uh, uh, where I more or less worked I was also a research ecologist there, and I, I uh, started doing work on food webs and contaminants with them, which has sort of been a theme that's carried on throughout my career. And then I joined uh, the U.S. Geological Survey in Fort Collins, uh, Colorado in 2008, and I've been with the USGS ever since. Uh, five years ago, I moved within USGS to the Columbia Environmental Research Center in Columbia, Missouri, where I'm uh, chief of the ecology branch, so moving on to the questions from the challenges and benefits theme. So in your career right now and in the past, um, what kinds of problems have you dealt with? Uh, one of the largest hurdles uh, or challenges that federal scientists face is, is a great deal of bureaucracy. And, you know, every organization has that in the private sector, in universities, we all have to deal with it. But the federal government has perfected it. And so we have many rules and sometimes it's hard to understand, like, how could this rule have come into place? Because it's you're just receiving the rule. You have no context necessarily for it. So it, it takes up a lot of time. And I think as federal employees, the, the ones who don't, you know, the trick and my first supervisor told me that I had to embrace the process because, you know, researchers come out of an academic environment and they just get plunked right into this government environment, which is a bit of a black box to most people. Not, not Most graduate students don't have any experience with working in a government lab or even understanding what government research is mm -hmm. like. So, so that, that could be an initial uh, shock. One thing that I uh, learned and thought about uh, when I first joined the government and was kind of overwhelmed by the amount of bureaucracy was the a lot of my uh, cohort of graduate students went into academia. And I quickly learned to think about bureaucracy as it is not a teaching load. So it's something that I have to deal with and manage. But in terms of a workload like a teaching load, it's just, it's just really not anything like that. It's not like this constant drain on your time and energy. It's just something that you have to exist with and not be annoyed by. That's really great to know as someone who's wanting to go into the federal, the federal mm -hmm. sector, knowing that it is so different um, from the as some of the aspects of academia. Mm -hmm. And so thus far, what has been um, the most rewarding aspect of your job? The most rewarding aspect of my job is to and this took me a minute to get to. Well, and there's, I'll, I'll answer this in three parts and try not to be too long-winded about it. The, the first was, I found it very easy to embrace a mission. Mm -hmm. And that when I was struggling to go back to that mission statement and say, you know, am I, am I really doing this? And so, for example, the EPA mission statement is to protect human health and the environment. That's just such a great mission. And, you know, it, I could, it's just something I could embrace. The USGS mission is a lot wordier, uh, but it boils down to, to provide sound science to help manage the nation's resources. So also, a, just a great mission. And so mm -hmm. that, keeps, that keeps me going. And it, it sounds corny, but you know, missions are important. And so that's one. The second is just the research itself. I'm a curious person. The idea that I have a job where I'm allowed to ask interesting questions that support those missions just is such a luxury, right? So that's it. Mm -hmm. And I get to work, you know, most of the projects that I'm on involve large teams of interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary scientists. And so 
it's just fascinating to work with people who have this whole other skill set and, and knowledge like hydrologists and ecotoxicologists and chemists and biogeochemists that are distinct from mine, um, but we speak a common language. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that bringing these diverse sets of people together to work on really complicated things is just, it's, it's amazing. That is amazing. It's an, it sounds like a great work environment for collaboration. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For sure. Um, I'm going to end it off with our last question. So okay. in terms of job challenges and benefits, um, what is one piece of advice that you would have given yourself from the beginning of your career journey? One of the things would be, it, you, you know, you have to learn how to say no and to be a little bit more selective. So it's it's so easy to come into a, a job in early in your career and just encountering all these opportunities. Um, I was not selective enough when I first started and I took on too many large projects at mm-hmm. once, either as the lead or a co-lead. And they were large field-based projects as well. And so it took me several years to show productivity because I took on large startups. Mm -hmm. And so what I would have told myself in my, after I built my time machine is to, yes, you can be selective, be more selective, but also think about your portfolio more. Awesome. So nice nice to meet you, Paige. It was so nice to meet you too. I'll see you soon. Okay, great. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye.